So we set up the structure of the application, but now it's time to create our database for the application. But to do that, we're gonna to need to lean on a technology called Docker. Now, what is Docker? Docker is a platform as a service that delivers software in packages called containers. Now, these containers allow for usage of different softwares on any device. So the foundation of Docker is images and containers. An instance of an image is called a container, right? So an image is like a recipe, right? And we can use that recipe to create something. So we can use an image to create a container. And within that container is, you know, different software. So in this case, we're going to create a container to hold our Postgres instance, which is a database that will hold our information. And this will allow us to be able to use it on any device. So if we want to use it on Windows, if we want to use it on Mac, there'll be no issues. And it leverages just enough resources to run efficiently. So a Docker container is lightweight, it's, it's a standalone executable package of the software. So in our case, we're gonna be using it for Postgres and it includes everything needed to run the application, the code, the runtime, the tools, the libraries, everything encapsulated into a container. Now I've, I've been saying Postgres, 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 right? What is Postgres? Postgres is a relational database management system, right? Um, it's actually pretty hot right now, or it's been hot for a long time because it has a great community. It's scalable, it's proven because it, it's been around for such a long time and it's open source, constantly making updates based on what the people need. The speed is there and it can handle a lot of data with that same speed. So what is a relational database? A relational database is a collection of information that we can organize and we can define relationships um, to interact with each other if needed. So say for instance, you have a user and like you have Facebook, right? And you have a user, right? You can create a relationship with that user and different posts that the user creates for their account, right? So you can establish that relationship between a user and the post that they have, a user and the profile that they have, a user and the friends that they have. These are all relationships that a, rela a relational database allows. So we're gonna use this for Postgres because I said in the future that you never know, it may be possible that I might have, I might have to create some authentication and I may have to associate or create a relationship between a user and their to-do items. So I'm thinking ahead and thinking, okay, a relational database would be perfect for that. And it's, you know, like I said, it's a very hot technology to use. Why not learn what's being used um, right now in the field? So we're gonna leverage Docker to create or to package up and create a container uh, for Postgres so that we can use it anywhere that we want to and that it's only using the, the necessary resources to run it. Um, and we can, you know, like I said, it's portable. It can be used anywhere that we need to, but um, now you don't have to download Postgres locally. We just have to containerize it and we can run it on our device. So how does this work, right? So like I said, we have Docker, we have images, and we have containers, right? But I feel like you guys probably don't know what I meant, right? So I talked about images and I talked about containers, but what did this all mean, right? So let's take it back, right? So Docker has a thing called a Docker registry. And this contains, like I said, images are like recipes. So this contain many different images of different technologies that we can pull from the registry to create our container. In this case, we're retrieving a recipe to create Postgres. We can use it to create anything. If you want to use it to you know, get a Ubuntu OS, right? Or if you wanted to use it to get a RabbitMQ for messaging, you can grab the image from the registry, the Docker registry, and you can create a container um, of that software that you need. But in this case, we're gonna create or we're gonna grab um, the image or the recipe from the registry, the Docker registry, and create our container that will run on our computer. So just think of the registry as a library, right? And we need to grab a book or, or a recipe to create the container or to create an instance of the software that we need on our device. All right, so this is the command that we're gonna use to create our Postgres container. And it seems pretty long, but it's, it does a lot. So the first command or the first part of the command is docker run. And this is just to let Docker know that we wanna run or create a container based on the image that we specify. And if you go all the way to the end of this command, you see Postgres. Um, 
everything in the middle of that is just defining properties that we're going to use or additional recipes that we're going to use for the image that we specify. So in this case, we're specifying Postgres, but there's some additional things that we're going to add on to this image um, to help define our Postgres container. So the first thing that we're going to do is define a name. So this dash dash uh, name uh, lets us specify a name for our container. If we don't specify a name, then it's going to just be defined by Docker as a long UUID. But if you want to give it a specific name that you can remember, then you can use the dash dash name and define a name after it um, to give it a specific name instead of a UUID. So in this case, I call the container contains Postgres because that's what the container contains, right? It contains a Postgres instance. The next thing I'm going to do is use this dash E and that is going to allow us to define some environment variables for Postgres. All right. So this is going to help us define some security for our Postgres instance. So in this case, I'm defining the password and I'm setting that equal to Postgres. There's a list of environment variables that you can use or that you can define. Um, but in this case, I'm only going to define the password. I'm just going to let Docker um, use the default values for the rest of the environment variables. And we're going to go over some of the environment variables that Postgres have to offer in a couple of minutes. But um, the only environment variable that I'm specifying is um, the password and I'm setting it to equal to Postgres. So if we wanted to define something like the Postgres username, we could do that here after this dash E. But I'm going to let Docker use the default value for that, which is Postgres. That is going to be the default uh, username for this instance. But if you wanted to specify the username, then after this dash E, you will define Postgres underscore, I believe it's user, and you'll set that equal to whatever value that you want it to be. But in this case, I'm okay with the default value. The next thing that we use is dash P to define the port. So there, as you can see, there's two um, numbers that we see here. The first port or the first number is the port that's going to be exposed on our end. So that's how we're going to connect. Um, to Postgres on our end, we're going to use this 5432. The second part of this is going to be the port that's exposed inside of the Docker container. So inside of the Docker container, Postgres is running on 5432 as well. You can change this value to different values that's not being used or different ports that's not being used. But in this case, um, I'm going to use 5432 on both portions of the host and the container. Um, it just makes it easy to remember. Uh, but you can this can be different values if you wanted to as long as it's a port that's not being used so this dash d specifies that you want it to be detached meaning that you want it to run in the background we're not going to see anything on the terminal we're just going to have this postgres container running on the background like we don't we don't want to see all the logs in the terminal we just want this to be ran in the background so and then after that we specify the image that we're going to use to create the container like this is going to be the recipe and now it's time to run or now it's time to cook up um, the actual meal or to cook up the actual container uh, so after we specify all these properties and we specify the image that we're going to use now it's time to create our container now if you go to the docker website um, you know docker.com or hub.docker.com and you can use the search bar to search for a specific software that you're looking for or specific images that you're looking for in this case i search for postgres uh, the official Docker image and you can see that um, information about Postgres so you know if you wanted a quick reference about the Postgres community you can go to here maintained by by them um, you can see the different tags which is you know different versions of Postgres that is available um, if you scroll down you can you know get more information about what Postgres really is um, and then here you can see how to use this image so you can see here it's very similar to what we just um, or what I just showed in how to run the Postgres instance on our device. So here is Docker run. It defines a name, some Postgres, the environment variable of you know Postgres password, and you know dash D, meaning detach, meaning that it's not gonna um, you know stay on your terminal. It's gonna be detached. It's gonna be running on the back background. And then we have Postgres, which is you know what we're trying to run. Um, and by default, it says right here the Postgres. If we don't define a username for the Postgres instance, it's going to be Postgres by default, the username. Um, and so if we go down a little bit more, it shows different examples, how to extend it. Like I said, dash E stands for environment variables. So if you scroll down here, you can see different environment variables that Postgres 
the Postgres image have to offer. So if we wanted to find a Postgres password, which we did, uh, you could do that. Uh, you could find a username if you want to using Postgres user, which we didn't. We're just going to let it default to Postgres. Um, and then there's more you can read up into on, uh, you know, if you wanted to, if you want to establish different environment variables, you could. And it shows an example on how to do that right here. And if you want to read more information, I'll leave a link in the description to this uh, page. All right, so let's actually get this Postgres container running on our device. So if you have, or you should have downloaded Docker desktop, um, this is what we'll see our containers, our images, our volumes, if you're gonna use, you know, if you're gonna store information from the container, but let's just ignore that for now. What's really important is containers. You can ignore this, you know, demo container. I was doing a separate project, um, but in your case, it should be empty. Um, but now, whatever container that we create will show up here. And to know that Docker is running for you properly, you should either see, you know, your Docker desktop is running, or you can see that you have like a little well up here that's um, showing that Docker desktop is running. All right, so we spent a lot of time talking about what is a container, what is an image all that good stuff about Docker, but let's actually create the container for our Postgres instance, right? So I'm just gonna paste in that command that I just spent some time going over. And just to do a little refresher, it's gonna be Docker run. We're gonna find the name using dash dash name, and I'm gonna call this contains Postgres. Then I'm gonna use um, some environment variables. I'm gonna define some environment variables using dash E. And the only environment variable that I'm gonna define is the Postgres password. And I'm going to set that equal to Postgres. If you want to see other environment variables that is accepted by this image of Postgres, you can go to the Docker registry, search up Postgres, and it will show the different environment variables that accept. One that we saw that it accepted was Postgres username, um, but I'm okay with using the default value. So if we don't define it here, then it's going to fall back and use the default value, which the default value for Postgres username is just Postgres. So our username is going to be Postgres and our password is going to be Postgres, which I'm okay with since this is just a, you know, small little demo project um, just to get the blood flowing. Then there is the dash P um, to expose the ports. So 5432 is going to be exposed on the host end, which we're going to be using to connect. And then 5432 is going to be exposed in the container side. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be 5432. Um, but I just chose to use 5432. It can be whatever port that you have that is available that is not being used. Um, 5432 right now is not being used for me, so I'm going to define it as that. Then we can use dash D to run this container in the background. Um, and then we're going to find the image that we're going to use, which is Postgres. And then we should be good to go. So now you just press enter. So we see here, you're going to see that it's unable to find, um, the image on our local computer. So what it's gonna do is gonna start pulling from the registry, it's gonna start downloading from the registry, and then it's going to create our container. Now, if you already had an instance of Postgres, like you already or you already created a container using the version that you specified, then all this is not gonna happen. It's not even gonna pull from the registry, it's just gonna start up the container. But since I don't have an instance running on my device, or I, I deleted it before this, this um, video so I can show this portion of it um, since I don't have it then it's gonna pull from the registry and then it's gonna start up the container so I'm just you know speed this up a little bit and we'll go from there alright so boom we have now downloaded the newer image of Postgres latest um, I just took the most latest version of Postgres but um, just like we saw in in Docker Hub you can specify what version of Postgres you want. In this case, I didn't find a version, so it's just gonna retrieve the latest version. Um, and then it defined a hash for it, but we're gonna give it a name of, we gave it a name of contains Postgres. So if I slide right back over to Docker desktop, I will see the container running here. And we can see that it's using the image of Postgres latest. This is the recipe. This is the container that's actually running using this recipe. Um, or using this image and we can see that it is currently running and it's running on ports 5432 and it started about 45 seconds ago so that is how you create a container um, using an image in docker and now we can use this 
Postgres container to store our information that we're going to use for the rest of the tutorial series. So in the next portion, I'm going to show how you can get this connected to Spring Boot.